Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about dummy variable analysis in eViews. Basically, we carry out such analysis when the variables are essentially qualitative in nature or the variables that are not readily quantifiable. The examples are gender, marital status, race, color, religion. To include such variables as an explanatory variable in the regression model, we, have in, we will introduce the concept of dummy variable. The example is if you want to see whether there is a gender discrimination which is influencing on earnings or not. How to quantify the qualitative aspect? We will construct the artificial variable which will take the value of 1 or 0. 1 indicates the presence of that attribute, 0 indicates the absence of that attribute. The example is if gender is equal to 1, if the respondent is female or 0 otherwise, if the respondent is male. Time, the second example is time is equal to 1, if war time, 0, if peace time. Here, variable, vari variables with values 1 and 0 are called dummy variables. The qualitative variable is gender and the category is male, female, region, south, north, policy period, pre-reform, post-reform, marital status, married, unmarried. These are categories and we will code them into 1 and 0. The other names for the dummy variables can be indicator variable, binary variable, categorical variable, dichotomous variable, qualitative variable. Types of dummy variable models which can be there is we will be running the t test that is one explanatory variable is one explanatory variable is a dummy variable then we will be running the t test. The second is analysis of variance model. The second is all explanatory variables are dummy variables. Third analysis of covariance model that is a mix of quantitative and the qualitative explanatory variable. Fourth dummy variable can be used as an alternative to Chow's test when we want to detect the structural break in the series. Fifth, interaction effect using dummy variable. Sixth, dummy variable in seasonal an analysis. So we can see that with the use of dummy variables, we can uh, six types of models can be created. Dummy variable regression t test. Here we assume that d is equal to one if it is a male respondent and zero if female respondents. Make sure that whatever you code it as zero will become the reference group and all the comparisons will be based on this reference group. Let the regression model be specified as y is equal to alpha plus beta d plus mu i. d is a dummy variable which means that when the value of dummy is 1, the mean salary of the male will be alpha plus beta. Let us go back and try to understand. If d is equal to 1, this will become alpha plus beta. So the mean salary of the male is alpha plus beta. If it is 0, then yi is equal to alpha. It means that the constant will become the mean salary of the female. Always remember, whatever we have coded as 0 becomes the reference category and is captured by the constant of the equation, this constant. The mean salary of female is given by the intercept alpha. The coefficient beta tells how much mean salary of male workers differs from the mean salary of the female workers simply by the beta coefficient. So beta coefficient is a differential intercept co coefficient. Beta is attached to the category which is assigned the dummy variable value of 1. Here it is male. Intercept alpha belongs to the category for which 0 dummy variable value is assigned. This category becomes a reference category. Intercept value represents the mean of the benchmark category. All comparisons with beta are made in relation to the benchmark category. The hypothesis testing will be beta is equal to 0. It means that there is no gender discrimination in salary determination or there is no statistically significant difference in salaries between males and females. The alternative is beta is not equal to 0. It means that gender discrimination is present in salary determination. We will be using the t-test. If beta is statistically significant from 0, we can accept the alternative hypothesis. Now we will take the example. This is a table 9.1 that is a data set of the Damodar Gujarati. So here the example is the data is given of the average salary of the public school teachers in 50 states in the district of Columbia for the year 1985. The 51 areas are classified into three geogra geographical regions. North East and North Central is the first. 21 states in all, second is south, 17 states in all, and third, west. We will consider the following model. Yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 d2i plus beta 3 d3i plus mu i. 
we are considering the two dummies. Why? Because there are three regions and therefore the dummy is always less than categories. But my one less than the number of categories. So there are three regions. So two dummies will be there. This we are doing to, to take care of the dummy variable trap. So where yi is, a, is equal to the salary of public school teacher in state i. So d2 is equal to 1 if the state is in the northeast or the north central, 0 otherwise, that is in west region. d3 is equal to 1 if the state is in the south, 0 otherwise, that is in the west regions of the country. It means that, say for example, if d2 takes the value of 1, so this will be 0. So whatever estimate we will get, it will be of northeast or north central. Now, if d2i is equal to 0 and d3i is equal to 1, whatever estimates we will get, it will be of south. When both of them turn i is 0, then the thing which is caught, captured, the average salary which is captured by the constant will be for the west regions of the country. So the mean salary of the public school teacher in the north is and north central will be. So expected value, expected mean y, if d2i is equal to 1, comma d3i is equal to 0 is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2. This we have already discussed. Beta 1 plus beta 2, 1 and 0. Now 0 and 1, next. So the mean salary of the public school teacher in the south. So if this is 0 and this is 1, we will get beta 1 plus beta 3. If both of them W turns out to be 0, then we will get beta 1. So here west is considered as a reference category because we are coding it as 0. And the other dummies which we are including D1 for this and D2 for this. Now how to carry out this analysis in views? Let's see. Now this is a data file that is table 9.1. We will open this file. Open as group. You can see here these are the dummies. When this is 0, this will be 1. And when this is 1, this will be equal to 0. So quick estimate equation salary is equal to c d1 d2 dummy is 1 and dummy 2 click ok we got the result you can see 26158 d1 is minus 1734 and d2 is minus 3264 now how to interpret this let's see now, this is the mean salary of the teacher of West because we had coded this as zero. So, we'll interpret this way. As this regression result shows, the mean salary of teachers in the West is about 26,158. That of teachers in Northeast and North Central is lower by, it is lower by 1,734. And in, and in the case of uh, teachers in South, it is lower by 3,265. So the actual mean salary in the last two regions can be easily obtained by adding the different salaries to the mean salary of the teachers in the West. So if I do the addition of this two, I'll get the salary of Northeast and North Central. And if I do the addition, if I do the addition of this two, see, the figure which I'll get is 24,424. Similarly, when I will do the addition of this and this, I'll get the figure, this figure. 22,894, which is a salary for South region. Now, we want to include the new model, that is an ANCOA model. It is basically a mixture of quantitative and a qualitative regressions. So, regression, regression modeling containing a mixture of quantitative and qualitative variable is called the analysis of covariance model. It's an extension of ANOA model and they provide a, ba a ba better method of statistically controlling the effects of quantitative regressors called the covariates or the control variable in a model. That includes both qualitative and the quantitative in the model. Now the example here is the expenditure of the public school is given. And we can see here yi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 d2i plus beta 3 d3i plus beta 4 xi, we are including the term xi, where xi is a spending on the public school per pupil. Till here, the model was there. Now I am including one more term that is an independent variable xi. Now how to carry out this analysis in EVUs? In e let's see. I'll again go in estimate. 
and this time along with the dummy variable i will also include the spending enter we got the results you can see here now the spending is equal to 3.288 now how to interpret this let's see so this 3.28 dollar will be interpreted as as the public expenditure goes up by a dollar on an average the public school teacher salary goes up goes up by 3.29 dollars this is the way we will interpret this thing so here now we will have a three you can say three straight lines where the intercepts are same but we have to remember one thing that the slopes are same of all of them the intercept will be different the next thing which we want to carry out is dummy variable can be alternative to the chow's test in the equation when we are using a dummy variable analysis we should be we should take care that the both intercept and the slope coefficients are the same in two regression two regressions that can be the first possibility and that is a case of coincident regressions you can see here slope and intercept are common for all of them the second case only the intercept in the two regressions are different but the slopes are same this is the case of parallel regression this one the intercept has changed the third case the intercepts in the two regressions are same but the slopes are different this is a situation of the concurrent regression this one and the fourth possibility can be both the intercept and the slopes in two regressions are different this is a case of dissimilar regressions this one now we want to carry out the dummy variable analysis in which we will specify the dummies for the time period so the equation is yt is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 in alpha 2 d2 plus beta 1 xt plus beta 2 into dt xt dt is a time dummies plus mu t where y is saving x is income t is time period d is equal to 1 for observations up till 1982 to 1995 0 otherwise means all the observations which are before 1981 are coded as zero. So the mean saving equations for 1970 to 1981 will be the expected mean value of yt when dt is equal to zero and xt is equal to alpha one plus beta one xt. Why? Because I am assuming beta d1 is dt is zero here and dt is zero here. So whatever I will get, it will be just alpha one plus beta one xt. Now, mean saving function for 1982 to 1994, where the dummies will take the value of 1. So, here it will be 1. So, alpha 1 plus alpha 2. And here also it will be 1. So, it will be beta 1 xt plus beta 2 xt. xt will be common. And therefore, I will get beta 1 plus beta 2 into xt. Now, we will carry out this regression in EVUs. So, we will see the dummies, how they have been coded. This is the another data set. It is a table number 9.2 of Damodar Gujarati data set. Open as group. You can see here that up till 1981, it is coded as 0. After 1982, it is coded as 1. So we'll be running the equation where I'll specify that the savings is equal to C dummy income and dummy into income enter we got the results which you can see here now how to interpret this results let's see now the regression equation till 1970 to 1981 because dummy is coded as zero so here this will be zero and this will be zero in such scenario what will happen is that whatever you get is the constant plus the income 0 0.080 let us see yt is equal to 1.061 this one plus 0 0.0803 x3 after 1981 the dummy will be coded as 1 so what i will get is now this two will become my constant 1.016 plus 152.47 you can see here and this will be the having the value the dummy will take the value here 1 so 0 0.080 minus 0 0.065 you can see here into xt will become the savings income regression for the year 1982 to 1980, 1995. Now there are some cautions in using the dummy variable analysis. Basically, we will have to remember that if there are M categories, then you will have to use M minus one dummy variables in your model. If you don't follow this rule, you will fall into the trap, which is known as a dummy variable trap. That is a situation of the perfect collinearity or the perfect multicollinearity. 
for each qualitative regressor, the number of dummy variables introduced must be one less than the categories of that variable. The second thing which you should remember is the category for which no dummy variable is assigned is known as the base, the bench or benchmark category. And all comparisons are made in relations to the benchmark category. For more videos on econometrics, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.